I'm Mark Perry. I'm the director of product planning for Nissan North America. Okay, and you're involved with this uh, Nissan Leaf? Yeah, I'm, I'm responsible for bringing the product to market, so I'm the, okay. I'm the car guy. All right. So where do you see the Leaf fitting within people's lives and within yeah, well, market the car lives? Yeah. We designed this car really for mass production and mass marketing. So by that, you know, just the design itself, it's a hatchback. So it's got a lot of utility. The, the rear seats fold flat. You've got a lot of storage back. You can put a couple of golf club bags in the trunk very, very easily. Five passenger. It's got a 90 mile an hour top speed. Uh, an acceleration you know, similar to compact cars out there. So you can go out and merge on the freeway, have no problems. And with the 100 miles of range, this can be your primary car. And, if, and that's if you define a primary car as a vehicle you use every day. Because with 100 miles, you'll be able to do your commute back and forth to work, grocery store, pick up a prescription, have to pick your kids up for soccer practice. You can do all that and still have enough range where you're going to come home and probably still have 40 or 50 miles left of range to do yeah. tonight. Yeah, that's, an, uh, that's a good point because I think a lot of people talk about a secondary car or their second car as one that they just drive around town. But as you just said, it's really you know, if it's something that they drive every day, it's their primary car. Yeah, and again, this is not a vehicle that you're going to take eight people in and drive across country with. This is not its purpose. Its purpose is your daily vehicle that you use most of the time. We always get the question, well, can I go to Vegas in this car? Well, you could, but it wouldn't be very, it may not, it would take you longer than maybe what you'd want to do. But that's where, again, it's a, it's a little bit of a common thing in the U.S. Most of the driving population has two cars in the household, or at least access to two cars. So this is your primary, and that second car, that's the one you tow, that's the one you have four wheel, that's the one you take on those longer trips with people with lots of folks in it. So primary car, secondary, the ones you use three or four times a year. Right, yeah. So how about it, we talk about uh, some more details of, of the car mm -hmm. and it's what's in it, the technology. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the things that are unique about this vehicle, again, with a, when a pure electric vehicle, we're zero emission all the time. So no CO2, no gas, never a trip to the gas station, no, no particles or anything else coming in, coming in. And again, no oil. Mm -hmm. There's no transmissions, there's no oil to change, there's very, very low maintenance on this car. Some of the technical features in it, the navigation system. Uh, we have already have it preloaded, so charging stations will be displayed on your navigation system. So you'll always know as you're driving around where charging stations are. So if you need access, you can get to it and plug in. Uh, things like your cell phone, you'll be able to remote control features in the vehicle. So it, you're, here in San, you're here and it's cold outside and you want to preheat the car. While you're plugged in, you can actually turn the car on, warm it up using grid power versus your battery, warm the car up before you go off in the morning. Reverse, if it's 100 degrees outside, you want to cool it down, you can do the same thing. Some mm -hmm. consumers worry about, I'm going to forget to plug in at home. Well, we're going to send you, a, the car is going to send you a text and an email to say, hey, you forgot to plug me in so you don't wake up in the morning and not have enough juice to get to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, so you talked about the navigation system knowing where charging stations are, and I know there's some problems with uh, getting the uh, getting that charging station infrastructure going. So do you know what plans there are for this? Yeah, and I don't know if I'd use the word problem. What I would use is, is there's plans to get the charging net network out there. I mean, here here in California, there are almost 4,500 charging stations already in the ground, even as we sit here today. Now they're using the technology that was deployed back in the 2000s, so early 2000s. All you have to do is take the cord off, take the plug off the end, put a new cord and plug in, and they're all ready to go. So the state of California is already looking at, and there's, a, there's going to be a bid process to pick a supplier to actually do that. So right away, there's 4,500 charging stations in California. San Diego, for example, there's going to be an additional 2,500 charging stations going in the ground beginning in June and July and be all up and running by December of next year. So there will be a charging station in San Diego within every five miles. You'll have access mm -hmm. to public charging. So they're coming, but again, 80% of the charging is gonna happen at home or work. Those are the two places. So having charging here at Santana Row, for example, may be a convenience, but it's not a requirement because you're gonna charge overnight at home or when you go to work. Those are the, those where 80% of the charging is gonna happen. Yeah, and in a previous presentation I'd seen with uh, Tim Gallagher, 
uh, he, he was talking about there being three models. One was uh, charging only at home, charging uh, at your destination, and then the third was would be uh, charging along your travel, uh, such as you mentioned going to Vegas a few minutes ago. So that would be one reason why you would charge along your travel is if you're taking a long trip. Right. So th we're thinking about now as we look at, you think of the I-5 transportation corridor from even Vancouver all the way down to San Diego. So we're, right now we're having charging, fast charging stations, which you're talking about, 26 minutes recharge time to get to 80%. So from zero to 80% in 26 minutes. You happen to, the normal time spent at a fast food restaurant happens to be 20 minutes. So you can mm -hmm. start seeing how we start thinking about where you would put these and then mm -hmm. what would be people doing while they're waiting to charge. So beginning in Vancouver, Seattle, state of Oregon, so that part of the I-5 transportation corridor is going to have fast charge stations about every 20 miles down that corridor. Now, that part between the Oregon border and kind of northern part of the San Francisco Bay Area, mm, there's a little bit of a gap there as far as yeah. just population, so maybe not so dense. But here, the Bay Area, thinking about Bay Area, Oakland, San Jose, Vacaville on our way to Sacramento, so we're thinking about fast charging stations. Vacaville is like a perfect example. It's right halfway between Sacramento and the Bay Area, and they already have charging. They already have public charging in Vacaville as we speak today. So yeah, their mayor is very accepting of it. We call yeah. it Voltageville. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really. <laughs> so he's very proud of what he's done, and I think he's actually bringing economic development to his city because people on the interstate come off and they stop in Vacaville right now to pick up food, you know, gas. So now all of a sudden, with fast charging, it's another amenity would cause people to get off the road spend 20, 30 minutes, recharge, spend a little money, and on their way. Right, right. I think I came across that once. There's like a, uh, a fast food restaurant that's just off the, the exit. The, they've got an EV charging. Yes, they do. And I, and I understand that it's a part of a whole uh, string of EV charging that goes all the way up to Reno, I think. It does. And we're thinking about now as you try to connect San Diego even into Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So how do you, along the I-10 corridor, do that? In the state of Tennessee, we're looking at how do you connect Knoxville to Nashville to Chattanooga. And then can we make the jump from Chattanooga to Atlanta? So all around the country, we're working with our utility partners. We're working with the state and local agencies to figure out where do fast charging stations need to go. You know, our first goal is home charging. So in all those locations, make sure we have the home charging process simple, easy, three to five business days. So as a consumer, you know what the process is, how easy it is, and you can get it done quickly. But once we have that worked out, then where do the public charging stations need to go in? And then fast charge, how do you knit population centers together? So that's the process. Yeah. So there was a, an article I wrote a couple months ago, uh, kind of comparing between the uh, the the if you will, charging infrastructure for gas cars right. versus the charging infrastructure for other technologies like electric vehicles. And, and obviously gas cars being the incumbent, they've got an existing infrastructure. But there was a time that infrastructure didn't exist. And like years been, ago, there were no gas stations. Yeah. <laughs> None. So, so, you know, somebody built those. And I, I've been wondering, okay, who, who, who should really be building the infrastructure for these newer vehicles? That's a, that's a good question. The, um, what we see emerging right now is there's a, there's a public policy kind of fast start initi initiative that needs to happen. So from a public support standpoint, federal government, I mean, we were fortunate to be part of a Department of Energy grant that is basically it's $200 million to put over 12,500 charging stations in around five areas of the country just as a very uh, dense, test of the infrastructure side of the equation. So that's going to happen. We see cities, we see states moving forward and saying we want to provide 50, 100 public charging stations to make our market plug-in ready. So when these vehicles come, the market is ready. The very good news is the charging stations are universal. So it's not an HD versus Blu-ray choice. It is they're universal for not only our car, but anybody's plug-in hybrid or other pure battery electric vehicles. It's a universal plug and, a, and actually a coupler. So you don't have to worry about, I'm gonna pull up and not have the right kind of charging for my car. So we're a little ahead of the cell phone industry where mm -hmm. you don't, now it's you know universal charging. You I think that's all the questions I have. Okay, very good. And it's very been good. very interesting talking with well, you. Thank you, appreciate and, it.